great evening to you lifers though i am again a day late i'd like to think that there's something fashionable about what day it is and what time it is and um the fact that it is like i said in the little intro outside earlier um it's full moon so anything can happen <laughs> I wanted to go ahead, lifers, and um, begin with a prayer that God would bring about the Holy Spirit to um, help both you and me get through to one another, to get through to others around us, and to let go of that horror movie type fear um, to let go of anything that's hindering us right now from being um, the light of Christ to each other. Lord God, I come to you as a kalel, one of your brides, and ask for your kalel, your protection. Lord Jesus, I know that throughout each and every one of us, we're all having moments, male, female, man, woman, child, parent, family members, friends, trusted neighbors, and so the like. I'm basically asking you, Lord God, to bring about your faith again, to bring about an end to your doubt, to bring about an end to all of this chaos. Thank you. Amen. So, um, there's been a ton of fear lately. Uh, lately, I've been getting attacked by people who are agitated with me because I, um, like I said, I think I've said it before in other episodes, um, I left the Catholic Church and now I am a Christian. Um, now I'm saved and I am fully present in with the Lord, with his body, with his beauty, with the grace that, that he has given me, with his forgiveness. And I was going to go ahead and um, kind of start out again uh, with a, a verse to kind of help us understand that even though we have a pretender in office right now, even though we've got bad laws being passed, even though we are still somewhat in a bit of a lockdown, I would have to say we have hours at work and in school, and I am in school again. <laughs> I have a, a, a job. I got a job again, and it requires some schooling. So though we're all kind of in this mess together and we're some of us not necessarily myself thank goodness but some of us are still experiencing homelessness and joblessness and um the rocky road of being in between work and um trying to just find that that safe that 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 safe place that comfort though we're not supposed to be looking for a comfortable ride in this life but we want to feel that safety, um, knowing that um, in the Bible there are many places where even some of our most unwilling prophets dared to tread, um, that they experienced, they, they experienced fear, they experienced hardship, they experienced it way worse than we did. And Joshua, Moses' brother, he saw a lot and wanted to let people know that they really don't have anything to be afraid of, <clears throat> that um, Joshua 1.9 says that, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God 
will be with you wherever you go. That goes for many discussions I've had about people who believe that I have lost my faith because I'm no longer Catholic. And um, point being made to many of them by me is that uh, Catholic Church cannot claim its own faith. There are only legitimately two faiths. That's the Jewish faith and the Christian faith. Um, other points that, you know, Catholics are the first Christians, and no, they're not. <laughs> um, but if you do have your Bible, you get to enjoy and be immersed in the fact that you know who the first Christians are, and you know who prophets are, and that we still have prophets among us, and a lot of these really incredible clear points in our lives that we're still experiencing right now amongst all the fears that we have that life is so undetermined. Guess what, people? Life is always going to be a ride, a, a roller coaster. Um, there's always going to be ups and downs. We are not always going to know what God has in store for us, but we can tell by those clues that he gives us, especially in the word of God. Um, I had to leave the Catholic Church because there was a lot of even people that, that know me really well understand a lot of the lies that were of old and they understand the lies that are now and I could not live a lie. I could not be complicit with those lies. I couldn't be complicit with extreme wealth that's not being utilized in many good ways. I could not be complicit with abuses and um, criminal behavior. And that might be something that if you are still Catholic, you are being called by God to stay there, to minister to people. And that is not easy. I was in Catholic ministry for a very long time since I was very little. It is not simple. No type of ministry is simple, especially when you have that inkling on your heart that God is calling you to do something big that maybe you just don't really feel like, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> but I know that God is preparing me for some type of pastoral role, and it's not being a nun, and it's not giving up my freedom, and it's not giving up all of my rights and giving up all of my possession. No. God gave me freedom. God gave me these rights. God gave me these interesting possessions. Some of them I get to get rid of, you know, season to season. And some of things that I have, uh, God tells me not to get rid of them because I need to use them to utilize them for his kingdom. So um, a lot of that horror story, horror movie type of fear, that uh, full moon effect, if you will, about when people undergo change. Remember many times, many times I've said over again and over again that change is not really a bad thing. Change is, uh, it's a mystery of the Lord to be quite honest. Change is actually very beautiful. Um, if you wanna look into books of the that I've gone into in prior episodes like Jeremiah, not an easy read. He was one of the most incredible prophets who saw through, who had to see a lot of pain. Again, like myself, I could sigh. I could see with what Jeremiah went through, how God led him so that God could lead the people that Jeremiah was constantly coming into contact with and in conflict with. Let's not let that get us down. Let's look at the fact that we, we are not always missing out. I mean, yes, we have a, a, a pretend president for right now. Yes, God did call our real president to do great things, but even God has to work on him and we're going to have to let him. I'm gonna close 
um, with this, and I'm going to, before I close, um, ask all of you, because we are in crazy times, to get to know your resources, get to know your suicide hotlines, go find out where your homeless and um, homeless shelters are. Let's have you go and find out where all of these resources are, where temp agencies are for people to get jobs, in you know, in including ourselves in case you need work. It's good to know where all of this is. And if you ever fall homeless and you have a family and you're having horrific struggles, learn to revel in that the way that the old prophets did as well. I'm going to close with 2 Peter 2, 2 to 3. Um, I'm going to close with, with 2 Peter 2, 2 to 3. And I want you to think a little bit more courageously about the fact that not everything is what it seems. Really, not everything is what it seems. Not all things are clear to us, but we are basically eternal students. We're always learning. And many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. Their destruction is not asleep. There are some really complicated um, thoughts that can be put in there, but I want you to think of some simple things. I want you to let the Holy Spirit lead you when you read that again. That's 2 Peter 2, 2-3. to And I want you to understand that there are many religions and Sadly, many religions do a lot of the exact same things, like um, the Catholic Church and some of the occult cults pray the rosary. And um, the Catholic Church and some of the cults that we have in our midst, and I'm talking like Santeria and the Illuminati, that are very dangerous and very criminal and very evil. Even they pray the rosary. And even they claim to honor Mary. Now, if you claim any type of claims that you are a Christian and that you love God, you will not call him by different names and you will definitely not call him names that don't mean salvation, God with us, um, living God. And be people who want to know. Don't just question everything. Be people who want to accept not just what's going on in reality, because sometimes reality can cause us to become very cynical. Be people who are accepting of love that comes from forgiveness. Because when you follow an apostate, when you follow something that is a false teaching, it's it takes a lot in this life if you are sensitive, if you are creative, if you are someone who has suffered great abuses, to fall out of something that is created in apostasy, created in something that's really a lie. And it's very difficult to move away from. Some books that might come in handy when learning about these different religions, especially one like Catholic Church. Um, you've got the secret book of the Jesuits. You've got many um, books that are actually historical in nature that, um, I'm going to close my Bible, that have a lot to do with the Lord and uh, many, 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 many books. Um, those written by people who have suffered great loss, but who are great Christian leaders. Don't be afraid to explore what's inside of these information packets, these books that are full of life, because 
even one of the first many great lessons in the book that um, created the major motion picture that I think it was like a Stephen King book or something like that, like The Mist. Um, one of the great lessons that you learn, you, know, you, you learn many lessons in a Stephen King book, a Stephen King movie. One is from that particular um, motion picture, never lose hope. Never lose hope. Okay. Some of the things that we're going to go through in this life, in this day and age right now, they're going to be horrible. They're going to be devastating. But a great love letter that was written to um, a lot of the pagan churches, like Laodicea and Philadelphia, from the New Testament in Revelation by John that were breathed by Jesus himself and visions of Jesus himself, were not written and they were not breathed by God to bring us down because we are all sinners. They were breathed and written to bring us up. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of people say, well, there are only two people in, in, you know, in the Bible that were, you know, taken to heaven before their time, Jesus and Mary. And I'm thinking, mm, no, there were three men. There were three men, one of whom was God, who were assumed into heaven. And I'm going to leave it with that. But on top of getting to know your resources right now, because we don't live in the most excellent times, I'm going to ask you also as part of your homework to kind of skip ahead in the Bible, if you would like, and read one of the most beautiful love letters ever. Read Revelation. Read Revelation. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful the way that the Lord Jesus Christ speaks to us, the common people, especially when we are as disgusting and filth-ridden as the people he spoke with through John in Revelation. I love you all so much. I'm going to leave you with that. Have a great one, lifers. Talk soon.